Hey guys and welcome to this new video. In this video I want to build something new with you using a Raspberry Pi and this small camera module. And obviously it's a camera but it's all done with HomeKit support and is actually relatively simple in terms of effort. So it's something that anyone can replicate. Everything else like how it works and what my experiences are will come after the end. So let's get started directly with the parts. We don't need a large Raspberry Pi but a small one the Raspberry Pi Zero. Of course it could theoretically be done with the larger Raspberry Pi, but as you can see, it makes sense to use the smaller one simply for space reasons. What we additionally need is the Raspberry Pi camera. This one here, because it fits perfectly into the printed case that we will need later. It is important that you have the correct flex cable, as the cable that connects the camera to the Raspberry Pi must be compatible with the Raspberry Pi Zero. The larger Raspberry Pi has a slightly larger connector and therefore requires a slightly different cable. My experience is to order everything from China if you have a bit more time. There you can get the complete module directly and it is also a bit cheaper. You can even buy the whole thing ready made in a kit if you want, including the case and everything in case you don't have a 3D printer. If you want to get everything a bit faster, you can order it all on Amazon 2021. However, you will need to separately get the flex cable as it is delivered with the wrong larger flex cable by default, but that's not a problem. The whole thing can be relatively easily replaced. Just detach the flex cable and plug in the new one and then it will work. Lastly, we obviously need the case. I printed it here in D. The downside is that I would rate it about a 5 out of 10 in terms of effort because you have a thread at the top and printing that properly is not so easy. It didn't work for me right away either. I just left it as is because I only wanted to do this for the demonstration of this video. However, there is also a GoPro mount for it. That should be significantly easier to print. And then you just need to somehow get a GoPro adapter for the wall or something so that you can mount the whole thing on the wall. Now let's move on to the software. So how is everything set up? Actually it's like any other Arduino project. You download the complete version, flash it onto a micro SD card using Balena Etcher. And then finally you need to add a file, namely the WP. Supplicant Confi. How to do all of this is also included in the instructions which I have linked for you below in the description. There you will enter your Wi-Fi data that the camera should connect to and then you will have completed the setup. Insert the SD card into the Raspberry Pi, connect the micro USB cable to the power and then everything should be ready for use after a few minutes. Now comes the exciting part. We will assemble everything into the 3D printed case. Simply slide the Raspberry Pi into the case and carefully insert it into the housing with the flex cable. Everything is in place, put the lid on, and then we have it all assembled. What we still need to do is connect everything with HomeKit, but that's also pretty easy. Just wait until everything has booted up, and then you can go to your HomeKit application, click on the plus sign at the top, and add a device. Then the camera will automatically appear here. We obviously can't use it in this case, so we click on more options, and then my home will be automatically searched for the camera that is on the Wi-Fi. It should then appear here as a camera after some time. Just press on it and enter the HomeKit code. It is set to default, but you can change it if you want, though it's not necessary. So there we already have the live image from the camera. As you can see, the quality is rather on the lower end. This is simply because the Raspberry Pi does not have the highest performance, and as a result, everything is naturally compressed quite a bit. You can still tweak the quality, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as it makes the Raspberry Pi even slower. This way, you at least have a fluid image, but there are compression artifacts that improve, of course, the less movement there is in the image. So if you have a quieter image, you will definitely notice that the quality has improved significantly. And with that, I would say, let's move on to the last point, which is the conclusion. So the question is, for whom is it worth it? Is it generally worth it? And of course, how expensive is it? And does it make sense in relation to that? Let's start with the price. You can buy the whole package ready-made, for example on AliExpress, then you'll pay around 35. However, everything has to be shipped from China and so on, but you really get a complete kit with everything you need. SD card, charging cable and so forth. The links are of course down in the description. However, you can also print the whole thing yourself. 2001. Maybe you have an SD card and power supply lying around. Then you basically just need the Raspberry Pi which you can get for around 10-14 if you find it on a good deal. Plus the HomeKit camera which costs approximately around 15 as well. 
so you end up roughly at the same price. But you can get everything without a case and relatively quickly from Germany. As mentioned, I will include Amazon links for you below. Now we need to take a look at how good the quality is in the end. As you have seen, it's not exactly impressive. So you will definitely experience a noticeable loss in quality. You need to invest time into building it and so on. Maybe some of you will enjoy building the whole thing, but you won't be able to improve the quality much more. In contrast, there is of course a ready-made camera. I also took a quick look at what HomeKit cameras are available. If you try to find something in the low price segment, the quality will naturally be significantly better. However, you will have to pay a bit more if you want HomeKit. So in the best case, if you have well-known manufacturers, you will spend around $120 instead of $50. That's quite a significant price jump. And it should be noted that you have a complete kit ready. However, you can still change everything. The software is completely open source. You can download it, modify things, and add components. You could theoretically also attach a network adapter to it and turn the whole thing into a network camera. You would have to pay even more for HomeKit cameras to achieve that. So you also have significantly more options here to add, expansion sets and such. So to put it concretely, for those of you who are interested in building something like this yourself, who don't necessarily have high quality demands and who see it more as a DIY project, mega good project, definitely do this for all those who need a professional security kit and perhaps have a lot of valuables at home that they want to monitor and always want the whole system to be accessible. In any case, for those people, I would say this is not necessarily the right solution. Spend a little more, get something decent, and don't necessarily go for a DIY solution. Personally, I think it's a really cool project and I wanted to share it with you. Of course, I am very much looking forward to your opinion on what you think about the whole thing. Feel free to write it in the comments below. 2001 and otherwise I would say, see you next week on Wednesday with a new video, hopefully this time at a clock. Until then, take care and goodbye.